Hello and welcome to In Novato, the monthly TV show produced by Novato Community Television, NCTV. I'm Pam Hazley, your host, and we're opening up this month's show from the Hilltop Restaurant. In this month's show, North Marin Water District informs us about our water supply. Novato Rotarians provided a job shadow program for Novato students. And Novato Seroptimists give us a tour of the History Museum, one of six museums in Novato. And now let's talk about today's exciting event, celebrating the completion of the Redwood and Grant Transit Improvement Project. Okay, so we were cutting the ribbon because it's actually uh, very near complete. Uh, we have a little bit more work to do, but we were, yes, it's ready to open. It's been about a six-month construction project, and everything's been pretty much on time. We had a little delay because of rain early in the season, but other than that, we're in good shape. And so we'll be having passenger service here at this facility on the 21st. Like I said, we've got a little bit more work to do to make sure it's all totally ready for uh, for passengers, really. So, But the buses are practicing. The drivers are being trained and so it's all ready to go. I think it's one of the most exciting things to happen to Novato. The fact that we were able to bring about this three million dollar project that is going to make it safer for pedestrians and buses, that's going to add a lot to the downtown. It's only a few blocks from the downtown smart station and this is for the people. 1,000 passenger trips every weekday come through this facility. They're going to be safer, the bus drivers are going to be safer and it adds to the downtown. It's a wonderful day. I think the highlight is everybody coming together to see this, this great uh, bus facility. Uh, if anybody remembers what was here before, it's kind of a distant memory trying to remember what it was like. Uh, safety improvements, better efficiency boarding, and it's just a beautiful facility, so we're glad it's here. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's very exciting to see after all these years it come to fruition. A great addition to the community. We'll have real-time signs that will uh, indicate when the next bus is and uh, obviously better lighting, better visibility. I spend time with some of the businesses around here because we always wanted to make sure that our construction activity wasn't impacting them and they've been great and they are so looking forward to it. I've spoken to a number of them. They're really, really excited. Our bus riders have nothing but good things to say and they keep saying, so when is it going to open? When is it going to open? So yeah, they're excited. We've waited a long time, over seven years, to get to this point, and what a day this is. We are opening and dedicating our new transit facility in Novato. We're so fortunate because we're the beneficiaries of this great project. No city dollars were spent in this, and we're so excited about that, aren't we, Regan? We truly are. I mean, this is one more beautiful project, a new focal point for our downtown that's really just going to be um, a great benefit to our community, for all of our residents, all of our businesses. Um, it's just a great day. Great day. So take your options now. You've got options to go that are safe, friendly, and beautiful. Novato Unified School District and Novato Community Hospital partner together to provide nurses and athletic trainers to students throughout the district. In this segment, we feature stories on some of the families who benefited from this unique program. I am the uh, certified athletic trainer at Novato High School. Um, employed through Sutter Outreach Program through Sutter Health and my job here is a 40 hours plus a week to take care of the 350 plus student athletes on campus. Well Parker's been playing sports since he was seven, started with the Pop Warner and, and um, did, did really well up until he got into his freshman year at high, in high school here at Novato High and um, that's when he suffered his first concussion and um, it was very scary for us as parents. Um, we weren't sure what was going on sitting up in the stands, up on the, up on the sideline. And If a trainer like that wasn't here and people, someone had an injury, they wouldn't know what it was and they wouldn't have anyone to talk to, so they'd probably keep it to themselves. And it would get worse and worse and it would hurt them you know, longer down the road. So for someone like Steve to come down, it, it, it definitely helps out because you know we can we don't have to worry about things later in life and we can fully recover from everything. Knowing that Steve, I mean, just came right right to him and knew exactly what to do and, and calm him down and pulled him out and, and assessed him and having him there makes uh, me as a parent feel a lot more comfortable, at ease. I'm completely, completely confident in, in everything that he does. 
those, both of those kids I have created a very close relationship with and, um, and continue to do so with all the 350 plus student athletes here and I think that that helps me get them to come to me in times when I can't see everything because I certainly can't. And that's a great feel um, that, you know, I, I can make that difference in a, in a young person's life, um, you know, and give them the, the best opportunity for, for success on the athletic field. There are hundreds of parents and student athletes that you could talk, come to this campus and San Marin and talk to and, and ask if it's making a difference and they would all say yes and give you a big hug, I'm sure. So I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be that athletic trainer in, in, the, in the start of this program and um, look forward to doing it for many more years. So um, we've been working with Novato Community Hospital um, through the school for several years now. I think it's really extremely important in the pediatric population that there is continuity of care. There are so many different intricacies, nuances with children and family networks that happen that important information can be lost in the cracks. And nurses for all the ladybugs will be awesome. It's been a way in which that we can help serve the needs of the families in Novato and Marin County by helping their children every single day, providing them with the same nurse and continuity of care on a daily, weekly, monthly, school year basis. I would say that this program is literally every single day allowing not only my daughter but other children to go to school, go to camp. It's allowing me to go to work. It's allowing me to you know, contribute to my community, to volunteer for things in my community to teach Violet's brother that, hey, people care about your sister. You know, she might be different, she might be struggling with epilepsy, she might have these challenges, but people in your community care. It's teaching him to be, you know, a better person and hopefully he'll grow up and, and give back to his community. It is literally changing our life every day. It's putting a smile on my daughter's face every day. And lots of children like her. Um, this program is, your money's actually being used. It's, it's to change a life every single day that my daughter leaves my care, I know that she's safe. My daughter stops breathing when she has a seizure. She's literally blue in about 30 seconds. So she requires oxygen, a, a ton of extra care, but yet she can go out into the community, she can go to school, she can go to camp, her family can work. It's an amazing program and I, I literally don't know where else to turn if this program goes away. So thank you to, you know, if you're considering donating or you've donated, thank you, because you have made a difference in our whole family's lives. Violet sometimes may not have the right words, but I know that one day she will, and Violet would thank you from the bottom of her heart. A recent fundraiser that this video debuted at raised over $30,000 for this beneficial program. Well, many people in Novato don't realize where our water supply comes from. Well, here's Ryan Grizzo of North Marin Water District to inform us. Ryan Grisso, I'm the Water Conservation Coordinator at North Marin Water District. North Marin Water District serves approximately 61,000 people in the greater Novato area. We have around 21,000 meter connections. Even though the drought is over, it's still really important to use water efficiently. The Water District offers an array of programs for both the business and the residential community, including rebates and assistance with using water more efficiently, with home visits or business visits, fixture giveaways, uh, and those are, include also rebates both indoor and outdoor. We have toilet rebates still, we have lawn conversion rebates, and then also irrigation efficiency upgrade rebates. Networking through the chambers really helped the North Rim Water District stay engaged with the local business community. One way we work with the chamber is through the Nevada Leadership Program. I myself was a 2012 graduate, and since the program started, we've had a staff member in that program. The program itself uh, allows us to engage with the local business community and create networks, uh, learn a little bit about the history of Nevada, and really get a sense of those values uh, to our staff members who participate. So if any customers have any questions on water use efficiency or water conservation, feel free to call me or come see me at the Water District. You can visit us at www.nmwd.com or visit us on our Facebook page.
We really take pride in serving the Novato community high quality water at a reasonable cost. Novato Rotary held a job shadow day program for students and they got the opportunity to learn about the many careers available right here in Novato. Good morning everybody. Thanks for, for coming today. Today was a, a really great event that we have in the city of Novato through a partnership with one of our local Rotary organizations. It's called Job Shadow Day. We bring in students from local high schools and share with them what local government is all about, what the jobs are, what the career path could potentially be for these local students, and try and share with them you know, all about the city of Novato and what we love about it and why we love to work here. Today is a lot of fun. I always love working with the youth of our community and sharing with them what I do and hearing from them. You know, they've always got a different perspective and I like to get them excited about, about local government. It's something I've done my whole career and I hope that we get more people into the field and into this industry. Today we're fortunate to have seven high school students who have chosen to come shadow us through our duties and what we do here at the police department. It's always an excellent opportunity to speak with the youth, let them see us as people, see them for the bright and intelligent people that they are, and try to educate them so they can make an informed decision about what path they want to take in life. I really enjoyed using the LiDAR makeup. It measures the speed of every car. It can go up to a thousand feet or more. And I loved going in the cars and learning what all the machines do because I've always wanted to learn how they all work. So today we are taking some measurements of the existing sidewalk, ramp, and front porch of the police office to see if the conditions are compliant with California Title 24 and Americans with Disabilities Act accessibility guidelines for residents of Nevada. I enjoyed working with the students and asking them questions and really letting the students use what they're learning in their math classes at school. Education is definitely important for us as firefighters. It's, it used to be people would be coming out, of, you know, coming out of high school, they'd be, you know, young and strong and fast. They'd be perfect firefighters because they were yes sir, no sir, I'll do whatever you tell me to do, sir. And nowadays we're more of a let's step back and think about what we're doing before we do it, not just rush into this emergency scene. We make all the decisions we make are calculated. It's our education and our experience that helps us make those decisions. The paramedics are, are pretty much the backbone of this department. They do the majority of calls because probably 80 some percent of our calls are medical. A lot of people will find that there's more paramedic jobs than there are EMT jobs. And so if you don't like being a paramedic, if you don't like running medical aids, then don't become a paramedic because you'll be a crummy paramedic and that's not a good field to be crummy at. Hey, Sean. Hey, hold down the fourth We all have different communities, and the architectural community is one of its own. It's a small community, really, when you get down to it. Highly trained people that do a lot of work. So Dan has been at it 30 years. He's got a lot of passion for it still. You find that longevity, certainly in a profession like architecture, is important. The longer you're in it, the more you know, the more value you are to your clients. Interning in architects' offices is a good thing. Being around, being in the environment is a really good thing to do. Having the drive and the interest and the passion to stay in it is important. Don't build walls in your mind that you can't do anything. You can do anything you set your mind to do. Set your mind on doing it and don't get distracted by the other things that will come in the way. It's worth the effort. You just have to have passion and inclination and uh, discipline. 
Well, many people don't realize there are six museums in Novato. Over the past year, Seroptimus International of Novato produced a documentary on all six of them, and each month we'll feature one in our show. This month, we take a sneak peek at the History Museum. Karen, you look lovely, dressed as a farmer's wife out of the 1800s. Well, thank you. <laughs> and this is how you dress when you uh, greet the third graders when they come over? Yes, when they come in for their tours. And so, what do you tell them? We teach them about Novato's history. So, Novato, the area of Novato was initially inhabited by the Miwok Indians. And then we had the ranchers, the, the Mexican ranchers came here and they were called Californios. And here we have a painting of just one of those California ranchos with the adobes. Eventually oh, nice. then, the area was divided up into five large land grants. And we have these beautiful portraits up here of Ignacio Pacheco and his wife. And he was actually granted one of those land grants by the Mexican government. So Pacheco, that's where the name Pacheco where comes from, Pacheco, Pacheco Valley. Valley. Oh, and Ignacio cool. <clears throat> nice. For the pioneers. Another large land grant was awarded to a gentleman named Fernando Feles of about 8,000 acres. This land passed to a few owners and was eventually purchased by Joseph Sweetser and Francis DeLong. DeLong, just like the street just name like right DeLong outside. Oh, yes. how fun. They planted an orchard. They planted an enormous orchard. They had about 20,000 apple trees. They had grapes. They had pear. They had peach. They had apricot. And we have this beautiful lithograph showing that large orchard huh. in our Valley of, Valley of Nevado. In it fact, says Sweet Surrender Along right there. In fact, oh, nice. it was said that Nevado had the world's largest apple orchard at nice. one time. Now, is this, uh, which mountain is that right there? That would be our Mount Verdell. Our Mount Verdell. Excellent, excellent. And also in our lithograph, it shows the home that was built and shared by Sweetser and DeLong, completed in 1856. And the home still stands in West Nevada today. Really? Yes. Is anyone living in it? It's owned by a group called Opus Dei. Oh, so, yes. oh interesting. Let's move on down here. So we'll what else do you have to show us? Well, eventually they dissolved their partnership with DeLong, retaining most of the acreage. But Sweetser kept one square acre. I bet I know where that one is. One square mile. It's one square mile. One square mile. And that actually is what is now our downtown yeah. Nevada. And here we have a plot map showing the lots for downtown Nevada. Uh-huh. And that was Sweetser who owned that, huh? That was, well, Sweetser owned it eventually because under the auspices of the Nevada Land Company. Okay, okay, right. good. Here we have our Ooh. apple press. Apple okay. press. It was very simple to operate. You just put the apples in here whole. whole. This area would crush them. You would take that material, move it to here, and then it would press. And then you would get your apple juice or your apple to make your apple cider. Kind of resembles a wine press. I was going to say, grape grapes press. are done the exact <laughs> same way. Interesting. <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. Now this section of our museum, we <laughs> save for our changing exhibits. This gives us the ability to show in more detail certain aspects of the history of Nevada. And as of now, you can see we have our train exhibit. And I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> well, when the students come in, they love to blow our train whistle. So, Carol, would you like to blow our I'd whistle? I'd love to. The this train is it, coming? huh? And this is, this is actually a train, an old train whistle? It, it's a replica. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, great. Thank you. I've always wanted to do and that. It's fun because we're actually hearing that sound again with the coming of our smart train yeah. to the area. Now, down here, we have some rails. This teaches us about gauge. Gauge, gauge is the width between the rails. It, one time, there was no standard gauge. So in 1862, Abraham Lincoln set what we call standard gauge, which is four feet, eight and a half inches. Now I've heard of narrow gauge railroads. Is that, yeah. that's where it comes from then, huh? Possibly, that was a narrow yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at that point then the trains could travel throughout the United States. Previously they couldn't go on all the different tracks because they didn't all the same width. Now you'll notice we have something that's definitely not a historical artifact. <laughs> but when the children visit, even though we know this is set at standard gauge, we like them to check for themselves. Oh, very good. It's always, very good. always a teachable moment. Well, Nevada was very fortunate to have the Buck Institute for Aging located on Mount Burdell. Recently, we videotaped one of their seminars on being your own geriatrician. It was a sold out event. Let's take a look. Thanks for coming. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you all here. 
So I'm Dr. Newman, I'm a geriatrician. I'm Dr. Tang, I'm also a geriatrician. And today we're gonna to teach you how to be your own geriatrician, or at least a little bit. <laughs> Let's call up my slides here. So when you're a doctor and you're out you know, in, in public and just doing your thing, and like uh, Dr. Tang and I this morning, we're looking over our slides as we're having some coffee um, in, in Novato. Uh, and people come up to you when they hear you're a doctor, or you meet them, you meet some stranger and introduce yourself, and you get the strangest questions sometimes. Uh, it's amazing what people will, uh, what people will, uh, will just out and ask you uh, just because you're a doctor. Uh, I can imagine, you know, if you're a dermatologist uh, and someone hears you're a dermatologist, oh, hey, I got this thing. So this morning as we were having coffee, uh, the person at the table next to us, I think, overheard us saying that we're doctors and we're geriatricians, um, and then grabbed us as we were walking out. And, and Excuse me, did I overhear you? Are you doctors? Could I ask you a question? Uh, sure. What was that sunscreen you were using? <laughs> you think that's sunscreen? <laughs> that's not the... That wasn't the strangest question I've gotten as a geriatrician. Uh, the most common question I think we get when we introduce ourselves as geriatricians is, is actually geriatrics. What's that? I get a lot of, are you a nutritionist? <laughs> <laughs> so let's start there. Who knows what a geriatrician is? What geriatricians do? Wow. Ah, that's, that's, a, that's really a lot of you. Fantastic. <laughs> I think this is a bit of a self-selected audience. I saw a lot of people without their hands up, though, so you're here for good reason, too. Um, so we thought we'd start there and just tell you a little bit about who are geriatricians? Uh, what do we do? Where do we come from? Uh, and then there, the, there are two goals, I think, of, of the next hour or so. Uh, we're going to talk about goals a lot. The first goal is to teach you a little bit about how we think and how that's different from how many other doctors think. Um, and the other goal is to let you leave here with some, some kind of concrete tips on how to talk to your doctor, how to think about your own medical care, and how to talk with your family and friends about your medical care. Um, so, who are geriatricians? Uh, we'll start there real quick. So, we are medical subspecialists. Um, so, Dr. Tang and I both started in internal medicine. Mm -hmm. So, first we trained as internists, um, and then we do subspecialty training in uh, a, a fellowship in geriatric medicine. So, much like cardiologists are subspecialists for the heart, or pulmonologists are subspecialists for the lungs, uh, we're also medical subspecialists. Uh, but we're a little different. We're not subspecialists for, for an organ or a system. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to say that we are the subspecialists that specialize in how to care for older adults. We're actually subspecialists for people, and that's different than most medical subspecialists. Um, and that's going to that's gonna be one of the big themes that, that we talk about today, how that makes the way that we think different from the way that, say, a neurologist or a cardiologist or a pulmonologist or a gastroenterologist or a podiatrist or, or so on and so on think. Um, so who is geriatric? Uh, this is another question we get a lot. Oh, so you're a geriatrician. Am I geriatric? <laughs> so I won't ask you to raise your hands, but I'm going to guess <laughs> that if I did ask you who here thinks they're geriatric, most of you are going to say, not me, <laughs> but that person might be. I, I am. <laughs> So, so who, is, who, do we, who do we care for? Who do we kind of specialize in? Uh, well, we'll talk more about this, but, but in general, we, we focus the most on older people, yes, but, but age is not a number. It's not just how old you are, um, but it's how, you're, it's how functional you are. So we, we focus the most on people who are the most complicated, uh, the people who have lots of medical problems going on, the people who maybe need help doing things day to day. Um, often we take care of people with cognitive impairment or with dementia. Uh, we take care of people with complicated social situations. The Novato Chamber of Commerce held its annual golf tournament at the Bay Club at Stone Tree. It was a successful fundraising event.
Well, we're out here for the Chamber's annual golf tournament out at Stone Tree at Bay Club. Having a great day, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of business development. Great sponsors out here for this event. That's what makes it possible. Bio Marin, Courtyard by Marriott, Atco Pest Control. The list goes on and on. A lot of great sponsors help support the Chamber, help support the business community. Makes the event everything that's supposed to be. Oh yeah, this is a great tournament. Really happy to be out here supporting the Chamber of Commerce and of course getting in with the uh, competition with the other districts is great. As you can see, we're representing the city. We're having a great time out here supporting local business. So thanks to all the sponsors for making this happen and looking forward to a great day out here on the course. Team Novato Chevrolet, we want to thank the Chamber. It's a great time and uh, come check us out. This is uh, Biomarin Pharmaceutical. We're uh, having a wonderful day out here on the golf course. We'd like to thank uh, Novato Chamber of Commerce for holding the tournament and inviting us. At Stone Tree Golf Course uh, with the Blake's Auto Body Golf Team, and we're having a great time. It's a Novato uh, Chamber of Commerce event. It's just amazing to be out here. We're having fun. Bradley! Oh. Woo! Yeah! We are the education drivers from Nevada Unified School District, and we're having a blast here at the Nevada Chamber of Commerce Golf Tournament. These are my partners, and so far we're doing it and having a great time. Thanks so much. Hey, my name is Don Clyver, I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce here, and we'd like to thank all our sponsors and everybody for being out here. I'd like to thank my team, and we're having a great day. It's been absolutely incredible. Everybody that I've talked to out on the course, a lot of them that have been our sponsors, have actually just said this is the best yet that we've had with the longest drive, the hole in one, closest to the pin. Those kind of things really make a lot of fun out of golf. You have your competitive people and you have your people that are just out here for fun. The mix of that and also being around all of the different types of businesses that come out here and support it, it's fantastic. There's no other event that really combines all of those things at one time. We're benefiting not only the Chamber of Commerce and its operations that they do to help all of its members, but they do a lot of things for the community as well. They do community events. We had about 110 golfers. That means that we're reaching uh, a fair amount of people. For those people to come out and support the Chamber, we're very, very appreciative. I really want to reach out and thank everyone that participated this year. We've had major sponsors, the uh, Chamber itself, the employees there, and all the volunteers. We want to thank the Bay Club, and also we want to thank Nevado Community Television. Well, that's our show for this month. I'm your host, Pam Hazley. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time right here in Nevado. If you have ideas for a show segment or a local event you'd like to feature, we'd love to hear from you. Just send us an email to info at novatotelevision.tv and we'll contact you about possibly airing your show idea or event. Please visit our website to learn more about NCTV and like us on our Facebook page. And be sure to tune in next month to see what your local government, nonprofit businesses, and community volunteers have been working on right here in Novato. Nevada Community Television. NCTV is your local community television station. Any Nevada resident, nonprofit, or government agency is welcome to become a member and use the studio's resources to air your programming. NCTV has an experienced staff. We offer hands on training and internships. We cover school board meetings, city council meetings, and many community events. Membership benefits include studio rental, the use of equipment, instruction on basic videography and editing, and a fun experience. NCTV, channels 26, 27, and 30. Come see for yourself what NCTV has to offer you.